Here's a quick overview of my little wardrobe that I've converted to house all my hydroponic stuff. It's a fabric IKEA wardrobe that I lined with some reflective insulation that I got on sale at a home store. So we'll open it up here and I'll show you what uh, everything looks like inside. Here you can see the top of the wardrobe. After lining the inside with the foil I slipped the fabric cover back over it and then I was able to use the uh, coat rack at the top to hang my light off and I built another shelf in the middle so that it would support the uh, little hydroponic buckets there and then I kind of partitioned it off into a few sections in the midsection right now I'm just using it to uh, just hold some nutrients and net pots and seeds and whatnot and in the very bottom is where all the electronics are housed all the timers, um, some light bulbs and some um, Roxwell cubes uh, so just keeps everything nice and contained in one area so I'll go into uh, detail about the light now and about the uh, changes I've made to my uh, DWC stuff system and the uh, second bucket which I've now changed to an ebb and flow system Here's the new lighting system that I'm using. Uh, it's basically just uh, three standard bulb sockets mounted to a piece of PVC which is then uh, mounted to a piece of bent um, galvanized steel. Uh, same stuff you'd use in ducting. And then I have uh, six 23 watt CFLs hanging below it and there's two per each socket and I used a little Y converter to be able to fit two per socket so that gives me six bulbs total and the whole unit is wired up and is suspended from the main bar and I just uh, simply tied it up I used, made some quick steel clamps or a little spring steel uh, pieces that would hold onto the PVC top which the sockets are mounted into and then uh, just ran a piece of paracord to the top close uh, hanger bar so that I'd be able to adjust the height of the light as the plants grew. And at the very top I just have a temperature probe just to see what the temperature of the air would be up there. And here you can see the two hydroponic buckets. Here you can see the detail on how those sockets are mounted to the light shield and then the little steel support hooks and then the cord which runs up all the connections were soldered and heat shrunk just for extra reliability you can also see on the edge here of the light shield that I've folded it over and then kind of peened it closed with a hammer that just takes the, uh, the rough edge off so you don't catch your fingers on it or catch this fabric you know wardrobe on it or anything and it helps to uh, to stiffen it up this this uh, material is pretty thin and then by folding over an edge like that rolling an edge you, you gain a lot of rigidity this system here on the left is basically the exact same as the original system I built but it does not have the drip irrigation anymore this is a standard uh, deep water culture hydroponic uh, the bucket just contains a nutrient solution, it's got air stones in the bottom, and it bubbles away. Uh, what I did change is I put a dive on top on it to help reflect the light and to uh, make it a little more stiff because the plastic top would kind of warp. Um, and then I used two inch net pots as opposed to the big solo cups. Right now there's four spaces that are sealed off uh, from the light just because those contained the uh, hydroponic lattice I was growing, which I moved over to the ebb and flow system over here. I ate two of the heads already and you can see one of the main heads in the back it's massive and there's uh, six more that have been started uh, I kinda made a mistake because as you can see in the back there's uh, some very stretched out tomato plants and in the very back there's some basil when you're growing lettuce and then other vegetables that require different nutrient solutions uh, it doesn't work the greatest I found that even though the lettuce was getting more than enough nutrients because it requires very little the basil and the tomato plants were being starved and hitting nitrogen deficiencies and uh, if you look closely on a lot of the tomato plants the lower leaves were starting to basically just uh, die from from lack of food so I switched them over this way now I can run this reservoir at a much higher concentration 
and I can run this one just at its really low concentration. Um, lettuce basically needs almost nothing to grow, so it thrives on a very, very uh, weak solution, whereas this has a, a stronger solution. Here you might be able to see a little more clearly what I was uh, talking about when I said that the leaves were basically uh, starting to die off on these tomato plants. They're getting pretty stretched out, um, partially because they were being crowded by the giant lettuce leaves too. They're kind of seeking the light out. So now they're on their own. They're slowly shaping back up. I kind of just left them as a test to see how they're going to turn out. Uh, in the middle there, uh, right about here, you can see that's actually a pepper plant. And the leaves are kind of, they almost go a purple color. They're, they're pretty cool looking. And then in the very back, there's uh, three basil plants. Um, basically two of them, the two on the right, are just singles in each of the um, each of the little two inch net pots. And the farthest one on the left is two plants that I kept together uh, just to see what effect it would have. Growing one plant per two inch net cap is, seems to be, you know, the best way to go about it. but. Uh, two of them together. I just wanted to see what would happen and they're lagging behind right now which is to be expected so I'm gonna carry on through with it and see how it goes. The lettuce on the other hand is thriving. This is massive. This is now probably four weeks old, four or five weeks old. Um, this one I'm kind of just picking off as it goes but I'm just letting it grow to see how big it gets. Um, absolutely massive. The only problem is I've used little find some little spacers or 3D printed these little um, basically caps that go over the net pots to help prevent light from making its way down into the tanks. Um, this big plant was started in one of these little two inch net cups so right now the stalk is growing through the center hole so it kind of limits the size of the plant because right now the stalk is tight around this little hole. It's only about a half inch hole. So. Uh, the rest of these plants are just growing in Roxwell cubes that are just sitting inside of the um, hydrotin pellets so they'll have no little collars around them but the big one in the back is a monster and we're just kind of leaving it leaving it go and seeing what happens with it. The change I've made to this ebb and flow bucket is I've used uh, one of these bins basically and you can see here I've drilled a series of holes and then I cut a piece of black ABS that would fit through the lid and I cut a hole through the lid so that this whole unit would just kind of sit and this would be its gasket uh, just to help keep the light out. Uh, what this lets me do is it lets me open the tank. You probably can't see from the light but inside there's that little small irrigation pump that I originally had and it runs through a piece of uh, latex tubing into the bottom of this bucket and the hose just pokes through the bottom here and once the pump turns on it turns on four times in a 24-hour period it floods this bed up it takes about probably 30 seconds to fill this container up to the line of the holes and then these holes drain back into the tank and it kind of helps to aerate the water and mix in the, the solution and it holds a flood for about 15-20 minutes so it lets all the hydrotin absorb the water and it lets the rocks will um, soak up the water. And then after that the pump shuts off. The water actually backflows through the pump and in about five minutes this reservoir is completely empty again and all the water is in the bottom. Since there's so many contraptions basically in this bucket and taking this thing out is kind of a pain because to get this out the little um, Latex always has to come out, um, and then the pump is inside. What I've done is I took a small clamp here, and I ran this aquarium tubing, and then this black aquarium tubing runs into the bottom of the reservoir. And what that lets me do is every week or so, actually on this reservoir I change it every two weeks, I uh, basically start a siphon on this small tube, and I flip it upside down, put it below the water level in my little recovery tank, and I can pull out all the old water from here, and then mix in some new stuff. Uh, this one I clean out every, every, I don't know, few reservoir changes. This one doesn't uh, have as much nutrient solution in it. Algae growth is very much slower. Um, with the black tops now, there's almost none, but after weeks and weeks and weeks, you will slowly accumulate kind of scuzziness in the tank. I'm using full organic 
hydroponic nutrients, which might be the result of that because they, they kind of break down as they are used up. Maybe a more chemical-based system, you wouldn't have as much uh, basically nasty stuff floating around the tanks. But anyways, this tube makes reservoir changes much simpler. On my DWC system here, uh, the reservoir changes are a lot easier. What I did is I integrated the whole valve assembly uh, right onto the side of the tank. I basically just 3M taped it on and here the main air line comes in. So all I do is I pop this off, this one little air tubing, and then this whole thing can leave the cabinet. And I can take it out and do a reservoir change or clean up the tank or do whatever I like. Here you can see I've basically just put some green tape on it and I write down when I last did my reservoir change so I can keep track of it. I do it every about week in this one because the uh, these plants pull the nutrients down a lot quicker than lettuce does and I like to keep this reservoir a lot cleaner. And to access uh, the insides for you know measuring pH or adding water you know every other day the lid is bonded so it just pops right open and makes things nice and simple. Over the last month or so I found a lot of things that basically make life a lot easier. One of them is just to purchase net pots. I'm um, using my homemade ones work well but Having a whole stock of these on hand is nice when you pull a plant out. You can quickly have another one right in there. Uh, you don't have to mess around and worry too much. Um, initially I thought I'd need net pots about this size for growing lettuce, which is just way overkill. You don't need anything that size. Two inches, plenty. Um, even tomato plants and pepper plants will probably go just fine in two inches. Uh, three inch if you really wanted to, I suppose. Um, if you have a source for these, they're super cheap, so it's easy to buy a bunch. Uh, this is basically a pH strip. I uh, didn't want to spend the money on a nice little pH pen, so this is what I use to pH the water. Turns out my uh, reverse osmosis water sits right in the range where I want it. Uh, it's basically sitting between about six and six and a half. Um, so I don't do too much with the pH. You can do it. I sometimes uh, I'll tweak with the pH by using lemon juice to bring it down but it doesn't seem to be a problem once the nutrients are added. Um, this is that standard BioThrive organic nutrient I've been using. And I've also found that when using reverse osmosis water, you always want to add a little bit of calcium and magnesium. Um, when you get a magnesium or a calcium deficiency, it can show up as a nitrogen deficiency, which makes you believe you're not adding enough nitrogen to your mix, which just compounds the problem because the plant actually can't absorb it without calcium and magnesium. So. Uh, I now add that to my solution as well. You can probably get around that by using tap water, but it's kind of a two-way street. It depends on how much uh, dissolved solids are in your tap water. It might do more harm than good. So what I use is just clean reverse osmosis water. I know there's nothing in it. I know the parts per million are almost zero. And then I can add what I like by adding the plant food and the calcium magnesium supplement. If you weren't using organics, organics kind of seem to be more idiot proof. Uh, there's more micronutrients in them, uh, with less basically uh, high-end kind of tweaking chemistry work. You can just put this one in for your, your vegetative crops and then you have a, a bloom formula which you put in for peppers, tomatoes and whatnot. Um, if you go to a more the chemical based systems uh, by general or, or general hydroponics you can tweak a lot more. But this is nice and simple and I like the fact that it's organic. Since changing over this DWC system to a higher nutrient concentration, I no longer can just drop seedlings into it because it'll burn the roots on them and you just you don't get the, the greatest growth. So what I do now is uh, when I want to start, let's say, a new tomato plant or a new pepper plant, I'll germinate the seeds just over on this side of my little, little uh, fabric wardrobe here, uh, just because it's slightly warmer, so I'll take two pieces of uh, paper towel, moisten them, and germinate the seed that way. Uh, once a seed sprouts its uh, roots, or its tap root, I will drop it into a uh, Roxwell cube and put it into this bath. This nutrient solution is low enough in concentration that it really won't burn the roots even of just a seedling. Uh, once it's developed some good growth, then I can move it across, drop it into a two inch net pot, and plunk it into the DWC system, and then it can handle the higher nutrient concentration, and then it'll really take off. So, uh, it's still, a, still a, a good working system, always a work in progress, but I will keep you updated as it carries on through and as these plants mature. Anyways, thanks, bye.